Hey everybody, it's Chainsaw Reacts back once again to the reaction for you guys. Take guys, of course, we are continuing Wolverine and the X-Men. This is Season 1, Episode 23, titled Shades of Grey. I told that title to my wife and she went, 50 Shades of... No, we're... no, that's not the same. <laughs> that's not the same at all. Like She was like, what? I'm like, interesting title nonetheless because regardless of how it's close to something else that I'm not a fan of, it's referring to Jean Grey. Finally, I mean, come on, we've been talking about Jean Grey, of course, she's been missing since the beginning, it was revealed, I think it was like episode 20 or something, it was a crazy episode about flashbacks and everything and showing the origin of Cyclops and how he met Jean early on in the early days of the X-Men and everything, and revealing that the Phoenix Force rose up and basically revealed itself, and that was the cause of Jean and Professor X going missing, and we've been talking about how that is ultimately what kind of consumes the world in a sense because the war causes Jean to kind of blow up essentially because fire took over Genosha we saw that in the in, in the in the mind of um Lorna aka uh, Polaris Polaris I said Polaris it's Polaris apparently that's how you pronounce it and so Professor X figured out it, it's the Phoenix Force because once he was told it's the Phoenix Force from Cyclops and Wolverine that that's what caused everything the the the, the explosion in a sense at you know, the X-Mansion, I said Wayne Manor, <laughs> completely different, <laughs> it's, been a, it's been a day, but um, he, he kind of put it all together, and telling Wolverine, do what you have to, so now, it seems we are hopefully getting to Jean Grey, because we know she woke up, she doesn't remember who she is, we gotta get to this, because come on, she is seriously one of the most important characters in the X-Men lore, and they've been holding off of really diving into it, we know what is coming in terms of the war and everything Professor X even showed Senator Kelly and Magneto in the last episode, the future. So that was, I think, hopefully a turning point, but I'm not sure because me and Magneto is asking for his son, Pietro Quicksilver, at the end when he wants nothing to do with him anymore. So I wonder what's changed there. I don't know. Maybe Magneto's doing something. I think he's he's always scheming on stuff. And Senator Kelly's same there, there. So who knows really for sure if that really altered their plans. But regardless... This is going to be intense. So let's get into this episode, guys, and check it out because I'm really enjoying the show. Unfortunately, we are on the, we are on the last bit of episodes, and then the show's unfortunately done. But at least we have these amazing episodes to talk about and to enjoy as X Men fans. So let's get into now episode 23, Shades of Grey. Holly. Just naming names till she recognizes one, maybe. We got to Jean and she didn't even say it. Uh oh. Uh oh. Mm. That's why he's so aggressive right now. Yeah. Mm. I knew it. What a piece of shit. Oh. Holy shit. Look at that. Yeah. Oh. Oh my god. The Holy shit, Gene. Five. <laughs> That's crazy. But then again, we know what's supposedly coming. Hello. Oh shit. Awakens. We can't reach anyone. The Institute must have been caught in the same psychic wave. Uh huh. Mm. What you get? Okay, get her. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Come on. She doesn't recognize you. Sorry, she doesn't remember anything. You don't have to be afraid. You know who I am. What? You can help me, right? I'll do my best. I mean,. Good luck. Oh, what? Oh. Man, that's all you. Careful. Oh, shit. Oh, my gosh. Full force. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I won't let him get you. Don't, pro don't make promises you can't keep. There he is. <laughs> Ah, uh, smart. Taking out the road. Holy shit. 
You keep getting hit. <laughs> That's the third time he's been hit and knocked down. <laughs> yes, exactly. Okay, you've been knocked down a fourth time. You're gonna get up again? Yes, he is. <laughs> She got out. She got out. She's not dead. Sorry, I have to take her car. <laughs> you have no idea what a momentous occasion this is for me. I mean, it's pretty crazy. Two of the most powerful mutants on the planet are finally in my labs. All this time, Jean was just a two-hour drive away. Mm. Frost, That's crazy how, I mean... Okay, that might that, that that that's good. Smart. I have to admit, like everyone else, I did believe Jean had perished. Mm-hmm. Well, it wasn't gonna be that easy. Came to me, so convinced she was still alive. <laughs> oh shit. We'll stop you. I don't doubt you'll try. That's a better answer than I thought. Yes, yeah, she Therefore, would. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good luck with that. Because we are not leaving without them. What the hell's going on? Oh. Okay. That works. Exactly. Fifth time you've been hit. <laughs> Mind powers. What? Uh, oh shit, the oh the phoenix, the phoenix. Thank you. I was about to say, oh god, we're starting this thing early, aren't we? Holy crap. Wait. Holy shit. What? I'm glad that he's not trying to push too hard. Mm. Oh, hello. What just happened? What the fuck? Oh my fucking god, what is happening? What? Oh shit. I am at a loss for words about this episode. Holy shit. So many great moments. This is honestly, to me, one of the best episodes of the show. It is so well done in terms of big moments, big reveals, and then when I think the big reveal of Apocalypse... <laughs> That Mr. Sinister is serving under, which makes sense, but still, that was fucking awesome. It wasn't the final thing. Because I was thinking, okay, we're going to end on this note where Gene is back at the X-Mansion. No. The Inner Circle. Hellfire Club. <laughs> it's revealed and Emma's working for them. Of course she is. <laughs> so good. We're going to we're gonna go through in order of the episode, and then we'll get to that at the end. So we're going to go in order of the events. Because I feel like... It's, a, it's such a good build-up, because I like to go like all over the place sometimes in reviews. In this case, I want to go in order of the events, and I might not cover every single thing, but it's a great, great way to build up tension and, and, and build up reveals and moments. It's so good. So, Jean is there in the hospital, and we have this nurse, and she's on the eyes, and she's going through and just on cards, just throwing out names and going in order of alphabet in terms of... So she's been so she's already went through A all the way to I now and she's on I and she's gonna go through J. She was about to say Jean. She had the card up. We saw the card and Jean was just tired of hearing names because they're trying to find a name that triggers something in her memory because she doesn't have any memory of anything, which is really interesting. It's unfortunate for her, but it's really interesting in terms of storytelling because this very powerful mutant who, you know, based on the timeline, 
destroys everything because of the war between mutants and humans. It's the, it's the Phoenix Force within her that destroys everything. So, it's pretty intense. Like, she doesn't know that she's going to do all that. She doesn't realize how powerful she is. So, she has a moment, an episode, if you will, but she lets out a little bit of her powers. The nurse instantly turns on her. And I'm assuming this nurse has been with her for a while. It's implied that way based on her sitting there reading cards and trying to help her out. But as soon as it's revealed she's a mutant, she instantly turns on her, goes to show you can't trust anybody. And especially with her going into that uh, closet area where Jean was hiding from the MRD who was called by the nurse clearly, or the hospital. I'm assuming the nurse made the call. And she's like, it's going to be over soon, honey. She's in here and turns around, lets them know. What an ass. MRD is about to take her. And then we see the phoenix rise within Jean for a, a second. It's like a couple of seconds, but really, really brief. And lets out a gigantic psychic wave that covers the whole city at first. And we see where it cuts to different people knocked out in their cars, knocked out on the street. It covered a pretty wide range. And we thought, oh, I'm thinking... Okay. Hit the whole city. That's crazy. Then the news report says 500 miles it covered. Holy shit. <laughs> Holy shit. And that is just a little bit of the Phoenix Force power. But it makes sense because we know what's what's supposed to happen in the timeline within a couple days. She's supposed to destroy everything. It's her that destroys everything and causes hell on earth. Essentially, it's the Phoenix Force. So that was pretty crazy. Now, thinking back on how they approached with this episode and how Emma went to Scott and everything and how Emma was sitting there trying to find Jean all this time and why she ultimately joined the X-Men and was there using Cerebro, it's all because of the Hellfire Club, the inner circle. My God. Good reveal. We'll get to that later. Sorry. <laughs> but it's such a good reveal because she's there helping along the way because she has another agenda. But... So they get to Jean, and Archangel, of course, Mr. Sinister, sends Archangel to go. And it was so funny, because I'm sitting there going, Archangel, he's pretty powerful. Angel was a powerful mutant, but Archangel, they're showing more and more how powerful he is. He gets knocked down so many times in this episode, <laughs> and he continues just to keep getting back up and up and up and up. And it's so funny. I was counting how many times he got knocked down. And at one point when they're fighting, and of course... He, Scott helps Jean and, and kind of, I'm glad that he wasn't pushing her in this episode in terms of like really trying to push her to remember. Like he, he, I think he's like understanding this, she doesn't understand what's happening here. So that was really good. But what I liked at one point when they're outside and Jean kind of sees for a brief second, they're all knocked out. She's like, oh, and then Emma's like, they'll wake up, you know, they'll wake up on their own. Let's get out of here. But here comes, here comes Archangel. Scott takes off his visor. He takes off the visor and just lets his full powers hit and it, it didn't really archangel still got up but still he, like i'm surprised but it was such a cool moment because he was like not like not holding back this is pure raw energy and not going through a device that helps him able to see and use his powers at the same time he's letting just boom giant blast it was crazy but we have this whole car chase scene and I should have known. I should have seen and known the archangel was going to ultimately take them because he did. He ends up taking both of them. To Mister Sinister, he of course wants to create a more powerful mutant, and he and, and then when Scott makes the threat, because of course the heroes when they're captured in this kind of sort of situation, they have to make their threats. They have to like say, "We're going to stop you." And Mister Sinister is like, "You know, you're going to try. Like, I know you'll try." But here's the thing: she would succeed. Pointing Jean Grey, she will succeed. And then tells the Ar archangel, "Okay, take them out." It's not going to happen. That was a good little fight sequence there between uh, the X-Men and Mr. Sinister's goons, I guess. Like these, you know, other other villains, other bad guys with different abilities. And um, and Jean, Phoenix Force. Except the Phoenix Force rose up but didn't, like, send another blast wave. It just was, she was able to control her energy to attack Archangel and then able to kind of calm down. Because thankfully, Scott calmed her down. Because imagine if he didn't. We're starting early. We're starting this whole destruction on early. <laughs> Would have been terrible. They get her home. Of course, Mr. Sinister is gone at this point, right? He's gone. So they get her home, and it's revealed Mr. Sinister is working for Apocalypse. It was such a cool moment. I wish we would have heard his voice, but it's such a good reveal because, of course, Mr. Sinister is working for somebody 
Of course he is. Like, he's not working just for himself. He's working for somebody above him. So, of course, it's apocalypse. Of course. That just makes total sense. Um, and then it cuts to Jean and they're, and, they're, and, and they're all waiting to go see Jean. And even though she won't know or recognize him. But it may trigger something. You never know. But then they're all knocked out. I'm like, what the fuck? What's knocking them all out? It never dawned on me that it would be Emma Frost with the inner circle Hellfire Club. I'm guessing they're not using Hellfire Club because hell. I'm guessing they're not they're not going to use that. So they're going to call it the inner circle. It's the same thing. But still, the reveal, the inner circle has been waiting for the Phoenix Force, been waiting for Gene. Holy shit. In, in, in thinking back on how Emma has integrated herself so well within the X-Men and Wolverine was smart Wolverine was smart with him kind of thinking hmm, Emma I don't know if you should join us he he was onto something he just didn't know what but to think back and it's it's crazy because now I want to go back and look at all of the moments Emma has in terms of trying to find Gene and try to help out because realistically, knowing and I'm and I'm assuming there's no real major hints. There might be some hints and little things here and there you may not notice if you don't know the reveal's coming. But maybe there is. I'm not sure. But just thinking back on how she really seemed like she was trying to help, and she was, but not for the purpose of getting Jean back with the X Men, because they, the Hellfire Club, the Inner Circle, they want Jean Grey because of the Phoenix Force. Like I'm pretty sure that's what the dialogue said. I mean, why else would they want to get Jean? They've been waiting for her because they know the potential of what what's in her. So that's that's craziness. So I feel like this has always been the plan in the since the beginning when she showed up. So and so the bad vibe they introduced right as she showed up it makes sense now because she was never to be trusted. Oh boy, oh boy. Unless it's a double cross, unless they know that she's working for them and only Wolverine knows. And it's going to be a double cross. That'd be interesting, right? Yeah, maybe. But it was such a great moment because I wasn't expecting that to be the ending. I wasn't expecting another big... Because I thought the apocalypse reveal that he's above Mr. Sinister, I thought that was the big moment. No, it wasn't. (laughs) It was not the... Jesus Christ. God, this show. We only have three more episodes. 24, 25, 26, and we're done. That sucks. But at least we've had these episodes, you know, and this to me was one of the best episodes of the show. So I, I, I will complain there's no season two because they were in heavy pre-production. They had written scripts and all that, and they had concept art for characters bringing into season two. But my God, we were robbed because this is such a phenomenal show. And uh, I want to thank everybody who recommended me to check this out after Avengers Earth Mighty's Heroes, because for me. I was missing out on this show. I was. I was missing out because this is such a well-crafted show in terms of all of these characters. And yeah, there's times where I wish we got more Kitty Pride or more Iceman or more Storm or more Beast. But it's like when the story allows for it, we'll get it. But when it's we have other things going, because we have a lot of things they're trying to cover here. So I get it. Uh, but it, it's unfortunate because we could have seen more than within season two. You know what I'm saying? We don't want to have that. So, what did you guys think of the episode? Uh, uh, God, this show. <laughs> what did you think of the episode, guys? Let me know in the comments below what you thought about the episode. And uh, do you agree with me that saying it's one of the best episodes of the show? Because I honestly think it is one of the best episodes of the show. And, of course, I got three more to go. But still, in terms of what I've seen, this is top-notch stuff in terms of what they've done on this show. This is so well done. Whatever thoughts you have, guys, let me know in the comments below. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I will talk to you guys soon. Peace out.